Since I finished up all the work I needed to release my previous game, Ribbit Rogue, I've been thinking about what I want to do next for a project. For the past five years or so, I've never ventured into the realm of 3D games. I've always been a bit intimidated trying to learn modeling and having to deal with all the headaches that an extra dimension brings to game development. I'm not sure what I want to do next will involve 3D, but I don't want it to be limiting what I'm able to do. If I have an idea that I think would be really good in 3D, I don't want to have to be bottlenecked because I just don't know how to model objects. So I wanted to challenge myself. Give myself 30 days to learn as much as I could about Blender. To start, I wanted to have a baseline so that I could compare it to at the end of the challenge. So I decided that a basic sword is a good place to start. Now I actually have done a very, very small amount of modeling in Blender about four years ago. And by that I mean I modeled like four different things. But what helps is that I do at least have some experience in the Blender workspace. Which can be a bit overwhelming for beginners. That should mean that it's like riding a bike and I can just get back into the flow of This took me two hours. Who would have thought that 10 hours of Blender about four years ago means absolutely nothing for me right now. So I'm basically back at square one. That means I wanted to find a tutorial that I could follow along and try and refresh the basics and just learn the ins and outs of Blender again. Now anyone who's done any modeling knows about the infamous donut tutorials. So I kind of felt like it was a rite of passage to start with that one. After about a day, I was able to learn some of the basic shortcut keys, which are extremely vital to not taking two hours to make a horrible looking sword. And I also had the basic donut shape and icing in place. Day two is where a lot more of the tools of Blender got used. I learned about texture painting, geometry nodes, modifiers, materials, weight painting, and rendering. And by the end of it, I had some pretty good looking donuts. Now, I know that tutorials aren't necessarily the best way to learn, as you don't really retain all the information that's thrown at you, and you're basically just following along and mimicking what they're doing without really internalizing it. This entire donut tutorial was just about five hours long, so I knew going into it there was no way I was going to remember all that I was taught. What it does do though is help introduce me into a lot of things that Blender can do, so if I ever encounter the problem, I might not remember how to do it but I know that it's an option for me to look into. All that aside, it's time for day three and another tutorial. The next one I found was for a low poly well, and I made sure to find a tutorial by a different person just so I could hear their own perspective and their own unique tips for Blender. This one helped teach me a lot about using the array and mirror modifiers, which are extremely important and powerful tools when modeling things. There wasn't a ton of new stuff I learned, but this one did really help reinforce the basics, and I learned some small things to improve my overall workflow. I did also learn how to render out animation, so you get to see this nice display of the well. This took me another two days, so let's move on to day five. Now for day five, I went through my final tutorial, which was a more in-depth look at texture painting. The goal was to create a mushroom, and it was going pretty well to start. No issues with the modeling, the UV unwrapping, and even the texture painting went well. That being said, after I finished the whole model, I found out the hard way that Blender's a bit finicky when it comes to textures, and I ended up losing all my progress. So just imagine mine look like this one. Honestly, the biggest thing I took away from all this is just to make sure I'm always saving the texture files, which are saved separately from the Blender files, and for some reason, Control S doesn't work on them. All right, at this point, I think my time with tutorials has come to an end, and I feel like I have enough of the basics to tackle things on my own. And if I need to figure anything out in the future, I can just look that up specifically. That being said, I'm not fully ready to handle modeling with no reference, so I wanted to figure out something in the middle. I decided to spend the next week recreating some models that already exist with no extra help. So I was searching around and landed on a low poly food asset pack from Kenny. Basically, I just found some models and did my best to recreate them how I could. This section really helped me learn how to break down some of the more complex objects into their simple shapes. And that's mainly the big hurdle when trying to model things. It's hard to figure out how to model things when you're looking at them in totality, but if you can break them down into those simple shapes, it makes everything way more manageable. 
Now, I felt confident enough to tackle something on my own. I had seen some of these renders of isometric bedrooms, and I thought it would be a really great challenge since there's a bunch of little different objects that I would need to put the whole thing together. Up until this point, I was enjoying modeling, but this is where I learned to really like it. It was just really cool to see these things in my head come to life in 3D environments, and I would just get into a flow of making all kinds of different props. In the end, I messed around with some lighting, and it turned out really well with a great cozy vibe to it. I modeled everything to a higher detail than was needed for this render, seeing as I even made a full keyboard with individual keys and everything, but I had a lot of fun doing it. Overall, I think this week really cemented all the basics and fundamentals, and it made me a lot more confident about modeling from scratch going forward. So far, I've made a bunch of different props and items, so I wanted to switch it up and try to make a full building this time. Now, most buildings are quite boring, so I don't want to just have, you know, some office building. So I wanted to make something a little more interesting. And I ended up landing on creating an old Western saloon. Working on this, I could definitely tell that all the practice from the past couple weeks was really paying off. I just felt more confident in what I was doing, and everything was coming together a lot faster than before. I think there was just a lot less confusion and time trying to figure out how to make something and just instead spending the time making the thing. All in all, it took me about three days to finish this and if I tried this about a week ago, it probably would have taken me more like five or six days. At this point, while I feel like I've been getting a lot better at creating different things, there's a bit of an asterisk on that. If you notice, basically everything I've done up until this point has been very boxy and Nothing with real organic shape to it, which is what I really struggle with in 2D art as well, so I knew it would be a really tough task for me, especially in 3D. I wanted to really try and get over this hurdle though, so I decided to model the frog character for my game Ribbit Rogue. Releasing April 22nd, by the way. I still wanted to make this manageable though, so I decided to stick to a more low poly, PS2 era model. I honestly had no idea where to start. So I found this low poly character tutorial that I'll have linked in the description with all other tutorials that I used. And it was really helpful to try and learn the basics and just kind of the workflow of how to make characters instead of just props. As I got started, I immediately realized how difficult this was gonna be for me. All the stuff I had said before about not having to figure out how to make it and just making the thing has gone completely out the window. I spent days just tweaking and editing every part, and in the end, it did start to come together a bit, but everything just looked off, and the topology was just horrible. At some point though, it all kind of just clicked, and I think I changed the way I was thinking about it, and it all started to make a lot more sense. As I kept trying to figure out what was wrong with my model, I remembered something that I had heard from animators, where beginner animators just have so many keyframes and, and it just makes their animation look all herky-jerky and surprisingly the more experienced animators really have a lot less keyframes and there's a lot more simplicity what they do but they just do everything intentionally and have the proper curves and everything just looks better. Applying this to the modeling I think I was trying to do too much and really force the shape with too much geometry and as I pulled away some of the vertexes and edges and tried to really simplify everything, it actually made the shape look way better without losing the detail that I was trying to get before. At this point, I thought I was out of the woods, but I wasn't prepared for the next step. In all the previous times I had to texture paint, all I had to do to UV unwrap was click Smart Unwrap and I was done. But that's not the case with this model. If you're familiar with what UV unwrapping is, it's basically a way to map all the geometry from a 3D model to a 2D texture that you can paint on. Think of how you can take a die and unfold it and see all the sides. Now for a simple objects like that, there's not really extra work needed when unwrapping. But for more complex models, you can see how the texture just doesn't look right. In order to fix that, you need to manually mark the edges for where the model can unfold. Looking back at the die example, all of these edges are connected in the actual 3D model, but they've been marked as seams for the model when it's sliced. While it makes sense for this example, looking at my frog, where do you slice it? 
for a while. It just didn't make any sense to me what seams I marked, and it didn't improve the UV at all. And even now, I, I did it okay, I would say, but I still don't have a full grasp on how to properly UV unwrap things. Most of the time, I was just trying to go off the intuition of what felt right, but I couldn't really figure out the hard and fast rules for where to mark seams and where not to. With all that out of the way, all that was left was to actually just paint the model, which was pretty simple since I had a reference for it. This was definitely the most difficult thing I had to model this month, but I ended up being the most proud of this one since it was way out of my wheelhouse and it turned out way better than I was expecting for myself. We're now at the end of the challenge and I thought it would only be fitting for the final day to try and recreate a sword and compare it to the one I made just 30 days prior. I wanted to create a unique design for my sword, so I decided to first lose a dimension and create a drawing as reference to work off. After throwing that reference into Blender, I was ready to go and got right to work blocking out the basic shape, then slowly refining it down to match the drawing. I wanted to add some runic text to the blade, so I found a cool way of projecting text and cutting it out. Then it was as simple as adding in some basic materials. In the end, this is what I ended up with, and I think it looks pretty good. The craziest part is that this took me just over two hours, which is basically the same amount of time it took me to make that first model that can be barely called a sword. It's really impressive if you think about it, how much you can improve at something if you just dedicate a month's worth of work to it. I'm definitely nowhere close to being good at modeling yet, but I think I've gotten to the point where I could start attempting a 3D game if I ever felt inclined to. If you've been thinking about giving Blender a try, I would definitely recommend it. It's not as scary as the insane amount of buttons and options would make it out to be. We'll see if I ever even end up using this skill in the future, but I'm happy I took the time to learn it anyway.